Hey everyone, welcome to another beautiful day near our home in the Southern Scottish Highlands. It's late March, there's a chill in the air, but the sun's still shining. And today we're gonna to talk about Hilleberg tents. And fundamentally, one of the big issues with them is their weight, and we're gonna talk about how to make them lighter. Now, if you know Hilleberg tents, then you'll know that they are extremely tough and they're designed to deal with adverse weather. If you're heading to areas where you're likely to experience conditions with lots of high winds, lots of rain, snow loading and just tough environments then really these are great options they're also great if you want a tent that's going to last years i can vouch for the build quality uh, when you open one up and you put it up for the first time it's quite impressive just how much design they've put into it and also the manufacturing quality it's it's really impeccable but they do cost a lot and that is obviously a real frustrating factor and then the other thing is weigh a lot so what we can do is jump into how we can reduce the weight without sacrificing that strength. So the first and probably easiest way to save weight on any Hilleberg tent without fundamentally making serious changes to it is to change out your guy lines. The guy lines that this Alak 2 comes with are the Hilleberg 3 mil Spectre lines and they have a brake strain of around 80 kilograms listed. So they're pretty strong, they're pretty good and they have the larger line locks because they're a 3 mil line. What I've done here is I've changed them out for a two mil Dyneema line, which has a 280 kilogram brake strain and use the mini line locks, which are slightly smaller to accommodate the smaller cordage. Now, it's a really easy change to make. You can just literally, without cutting them, untie the original guy line so they're there if you wanna use them again and tie the new ones on and you're good to go, basically. You can replicate the length or you can change it. I've kept it the same as the original ones. I've found these ones to be extremely strong so far using them throughout this winter on both the Alak 2 and on my Acto uh, in severe mountain conditions, particularly on the Acto. It's not been an issue at all. Obviously they have a higher brake strain so they should be stronger. They have, uh, on this type of Dyneema cordage, there's lots of different options out there, um, but this particular one I've bought has a sleeve over it so it doesn't slip in the line lock, so just make sure that that's the case, that they're getting a good seating. Then the only thing to be aware of is obviously with the slightly smaller clam cleats, there is a potential. I say clam cleats, they're the manufacturer. It's the line locks, they're manufactured by clam cleat. But um, the only thing is that there's a potential that there's a slight reduction in overall strength in that plastic. I've emailed them, they haven't responded to me yet. So if I get a response, I'll update you guys, but I'm still waiting on that. I've done some small tests myself with tension and, and strength, and it doesn't seem to be much difference, if any at all. I can't notice that they're uh, any more fragile. So I think that they're pretty good to go. And that's a really easy way to save weight all around on these. This um, Dyneema cordage that I'm using comes in at three grams per meter. So it's quite a big saving as opposed to the original version. And obviously you could do this to any Hilleberg tent and you can choose which cordage you use as to what you need. Only thing to be aware of is on the original Hilleberg guy lines with the much larger cordage and line locks, they could be slightly easier to adjust with gloves on, or at least that's the thinking. I've used these smaller versions this winter in extremely cold conditions down to sort of minus 17 or lower wind chill in the Scottish mountains in snow with full mountaineering gloves on and very cold hands. And it was no issue to adjust them whatsoever. They're very simplistic. You pull and slide and it seats fine. So. You know, it's something to be aware of if you are going on a polar expedition, maybe you want to use the original ones, but um, these seem to be doing pretty well so far. So that's the first way. Let's jump into the second way you can save weight. So the second way you can save weight is a slightly more extreme option, although in all honesty, it's not really that extreme, is by cutting off all of the zips. Now, what you're going to do is not just cut off all the zips and leave them like that. You're going to cut off the original zips because Hilleberg still uses metal zipper pulls all the way around. And that is to say you're gonna cut off the zipper pulls, not the zips. <laughs> you want the zips so you can get in and out of the tent. But the zipper pulls themselves, Hilleberg uses metal zipper pulls and Hilleberg tents are pretty overbuilt. So they tend to have quite a lot of zips for all the different venting options, the door options. Like sometimes you'll think, oh my goodness, they've given me so many different ways to open this door. So there's all of these different metal zipper pulls. The outside doors being very big ones, the inside ones being smaller ones, and some of the vents being even smaller ones. But they're all metal. Now, number one, what that means is when you're in very windy conditions, they rattle a lot. And any Hilleberg user will certainly know this. It can be quite annoying. The second thing is they weigh quite a lot because they are pieces of metal. Now, what I've done is I've snipped them off all the way around and I've replaced them with Dyneema cordage, exactly the same as the guy lines. So when you've got your off cuts from your guy lines, you can use those to pull them through the zips, tie them off, singe the end, 
and hey presto, you've got a nice lightweight zipper pull. Again, you can adjust the size you want, so you can make sure that they're big enough to easily use with gloves on or to be able to grab hold of. Um, a lot of tent manufacturers already do this on their tents, on their lightweight tents, is use cordage instead of traditional zipper pulls because it is lighter and I don't think you lose any benefit whatsoever over the metal. Um, you guys can tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, if there's some reason that you think the metal ones would be better, but I really can't think of any reason at all. It's quieter and it's lighter. On this particular tent, the Alec 2, there are quite a lot of zips. So when you take all the zipper pulls off, you save quite a substantial amount of weight and the cordage that you use to replace them is a lot lighter. Like I say, comes in about three grams per meter of cordage. So that is the second way you can save a lot of weight on your Hilleberg tent. So those are the two main ways that you're gonna save weight. The additional ones that you can do are like bonus features. They definitely do save weight, and whether you wanna go for these, you know, is gonna be dependent on how much you really care about saving weight on your tent. Very simplistic. They do obviously cost a little bit more depending on which option you want to go for, but fundamentally when you get the tent, it's going to come with a bag for the poles, a bag for the pegs, and a bag for the tent. Now, what you can do is you can just replace those three bags with lighter versions. So when you get it, they'll be the nice, good quality Hilleberg ones. They obviously are excellent quality and they will probably last for years if you want to continue to use them. If you fancy saving some weight, then you can do quite a bit by changing out the pole bag in the instance, I've changed it out for a Dyneema version, which is extremely light. Then you can change out the peg bag. Again, I've changed it out for a Dyneema version, which is much, much lighter than the original one. I've gone for one with a zip on it, but you can obviously go for even lighter ones that have like a draw cord closure on, uh, closure on the top. And then the last thing is the tent bag itself. Now in this instance, what I've done is I've just used the Acto tent bag for my Alac because I have a Dyneema bag that fits the Acto to save weight on that because I've made these same changes that I'm talking about today to the Acto. I couldn't find a Dyneema bag yet that I felt was um, a suitable fit for the Alac. I'm still in the hunt for one, so if you know of one, then let me know down in the comments below. But what I did do is just use the Acto bag instead. I've found that it fits pretty easily without too much faff if you roll it nice and tight but I think I probably hopefully will change it out for a better one going forwards. And that saves a little bit of weight as opposed to the original bag. I'm sure a Dyneema bag that's suitable would be even lighter. So those are additional three ways you can save some more grams and hopefully make some more weight savings so that, you know, when you want to take an extra comfort item or carry a beer up a hill, at least you've saved enough on your tent to know you can do it easily, right? And one last word on weight savings on Hilleberg tents is pegs. Now, personally, I pretty much use the original pegs that it came with um, for conditions outside of sort of snow and ice um, dependent because I think they are really good quality. And although they aren't the absolute lightest, you benefit by the, from the fact that they're fairly versatile and they're very strong. Um, but you certainly could if you knew that you were going to be going into conditions where uh, a lighter peg would be suitable, change pegs out and that will save you weight. That's the same for any tent, as you might know. Um, what I found is in the winter, particularly this year where I've been up high in lots of snow, uh, have used actual snow stakes, um, various different anchors, and you actually add weight rather than saving weight. But if you save weight on the other factors on your tent and you've reduced some of the original weight by changing out your guy lines and stuff, taking those extra pegs means you're at least not adding weight to what the original weight was. You may be just kind of leveling out to where the original weight was. So swings and roundabouts, obviously these are all things that you're gonna be able to choose if you wanna do them, if you think it's silly, you know, no problem at all. You don't have to change the weight of your tent. <laughs> there are any suggestions. Well, hopefully you found it useful seeing ways that you could reduce weight on your Hilleberg tent. Certainly these options are applicable to other tents out there as well. So, you know, if you're not happy with the weight of your tent, these are changes you could think about making. I don't think that they necessarily reduce the strength or the integrity of any tent. I think that if you're using the right cordage and you're using good quality line locks, then really you're not going to lose anything at all. As for the zips and all the rest of it, I can only see it being an improvement. If you have any thoughts on it though, please do leave those down in the comments below. If you've got questions or anything that you think you want us to know, then by all means, leave it down below. Also check us out on Instagram, at Outdoor Intrigue. We're always putting our different adventures pretty much every week up there. So please do feel free to connect with us on there. And otherwise, if you like the videos we produce, then do think about subscribing. We've got lots more content always coming out as we spend most of our time out in the Scottish mountains. We're happy to share it with you all. And if you like this particular video, then hit that thumbs up. 
And thanks very much for watching. As always, take care of yourselves and happy trails, everyone.